but black people only account for about 14% of the population. So what's going on? Why is that? Are families putting those children in riskier situations? And are those kids not getting the same attention that other demographics do when they vanish and need to come home? In studio with me to talk about the reasons why some missing persons cases seem to be handled differently and how California's new Ebony Alert may level the playing field is Leah Shank, founder of Impact. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Leah, like just last week, two young adult attendees of the Aftershock Music Festival were reported missing. Thankfully, they just decided not to contact their loved ones for four days after their phones were stolen. This case stirred up so much chatter in the community, chat, uh, captured so much community attention, but a lot of people were also remarking that if one of the missing had not been a blonde, young, blue-eyed man, that there might not have been an outcry at all. You've seen this and heard that kind of discussion before, right? Yes, absolutely. There's just not the same outcry cry when it comes to missing um, black children, period. But black girls and black women specifically, they don't get the same resources allocated to them to be found. And they're never received the much, as much community outrage and, and community camaraderie that these other children are receiving. So we do see that very often. And it makes it difficult for us to work with the families to be able to rescue these kids to get them home. And it's not just kids, because both of the young men that were missing after, reported missing after Aftershock, 24 and 32, young adults, but adults. But it kind of just transfers no matter what the age yes. range is. Now you and other advocates, while we're talking about children of color, black children, you say those kids don't receive, as you were just mentioning, the Amber Alert to the media attention, highlighting that they're missing in the same way that other racial groups do. And you think that racism comes to play here because there's a societal perception perhaps that, oh, they must have done something wrong, you know, or must be involved in something illicit. Yes, absolutely. You know, when it comes to missing black, black children and black, even black women specifically, um, there's just, for one, they're hypersexualized. That's one. And then they're often blamed for their own disappearance. And so you don't get those same resources allocated to them for that very reason, that it's just assumed that wherever they are is where they want to be. And for other races, there is a, a fascination, you know, that comes along with them and their disappearance. And you get more of an outrage and more of a responsive, supportive approach than you get for our community. One state report has found that 51% of white female and male homicide victims get newspaper coverage compared to 18% of indigenous females. Folks in our area will remember last summer's focus on local teen Kylie Rodney, who we now know drove her car off into a lake in the dark. Also, people remember the case of Van Life blogger Gabby Petito that really consumed national attention until it was determined that her boyfriend killed her and concealed her body. 710 indigenous women had gone missing over the decade before those disappearances, and none of them got that kind of attention. Now, since then, Assemblyman Ramos has passed the feather alert to help find indigenous women. And for black women and youth, the governor has just signed the ebony alert into law. What do you think the difference will be now that people know that there's supposed to be this ebony alert? Well, the difference is that now it'll mandate by law that law enforcement has to notify media, for one, and they have to put out the applicable notification to let this the community know and let everybody else know that that needs to be able to help find these missing people. And it also gives those resources in place. So that means the helicopter, the dogs on the ground. That means that physical search to go out and look for them. It also changes the classification, whereas Amber Alert is very strict. It has about four classifications, where now Ebony Alert will be between the ages of 12 and 25, where the Amber Alert is 17 and under. And it, the Ebony Alert also includes runaways and human trafficking um, victims. And that's huge. That is huge because after all, runaways need to be looked for too. So it definitely changes the way that law enforcement and society will now look for these missing people. The president of the NAACP California Hi uh, Hawaii State Conference, which sponsored the Ebony Alert legislation, has said that the alert is a great first step in mitigating racial inequities when it comes to black women and children when they go missing. What, in your opinion, what else needs to be done besides this if this is just a first step? Yeah, it's a first step, and that's what we want. We want at least that first step. Now that that first step has been made, now it has to be implemented into law, which will be January 1st. Mm -hmm. And then now we just have to educate our community as to the value of black lives and the value of, of what human trafficking and what runaways means to the overall picture of a missing person. Because a lot of times there are so many other factors that classify them as a runaway or classify them under a human trafficking victim that we all just need to be educated on because that changes the paradigm as far as the way black children are looked for versus white children in this case.
All righty, and this yeah. is just the beginning. As we mentioned, this goes into effect at the beginning of next year. Thank you so much for thank joining you. us. We know you're on thank the ground you. with these families, standing yes. with them all the time. So yes. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank all you. Right.